Um, my mom lives in a different state than I do. Uh, she lives in western Pennsylvania and I live in Colorado. And um, she came out for a visit in August and seemed very healthy. Everything was fine. And the next thing you know, I get a call that um, she had had some issues and went to the emergency room. And um, a little while later, we found out she was diagnosed with stage one uterine cancer. And um, we all thought it was kind of the best possible scenario under the circumstances. I mean, you wouldn't wish cancer on anyone, but um, if you're gonna have it, stage one is a okay place to be. Um, but it turned out that it was actually stage three. Once they finally got around to her surgery, um, about two months after her initial episode, the pathologist report came back and said that she had stage three uterine cancer. It's a, a type of cancer called um, UPS, wait, UPS um, C, and that's uterine papillary serous carcinoma. And sorry, I'm not a medical person, so I kind of stumble over that, but it's a very rare and aggressive cancer. Usually occurs in older women postmenopausal women and like my mom and like I said it's very rare and it's very aggressive um, it had affected six of the seven lymph nodes that they removed during her surgery so your guess is as good as mine as to where else it might be and now it's been a month since her surgery and she still hasn't seen a um, well she's talked to a radiation oncologist but she has not started her radiation treatments those are another week down the road and Meanwhile, now she's having more symptoms, loss of um, bladder control and swelling in one of her legs from top to bottom, and that's probably because they removed a lymph node. So um, it's, it's been a, a difficult last couple months. Absolutely. Um, the reason for the length of time between treatment and surgery is to allow her time to recover, but she's recovering very quickly. Um, so, and, and she's frankly quite willing to let the time pass, which is a little surprising. Um, I've try to encourage her um, to ask to get in sooner. Um, do you want to go to Pittsburgh, perhaps? There's a lot of um, good research and good science that comes out of Pittsburgh. She only lives 30 miles away from Pittsburgh, and she's not willing to go there, even if someone else were to take her. She's solidly rooted in her town, and she doesn't really want to leave there. So. Part of my responsibility as her daughter is to respect her wishes. All I can do is make suggestions as to other alternatives and give her information that maybe I find, but the final decision in her process is really hers. And I feel very strongly about that. I'm sure that not everybody would agree with me, but um, I'm respecting the way that she's choosing to handle this, even if it's the way that I wouldn't handle if it were me. Well, I definitely think she could be a little bit more aggressive with her doctors and ask some more questions um, or take the time to compile her questions and then ask for a phone appointment, just something to run through her list of questions. Um, but like I said, she's not handling this in the way that I would. So she's uh, 80? Mm -hmm. She's 80 now. And do you think her being you know, now 80 years old plays a part in her not wanting to go or not being able to drive, make that drive to Pittsburgh to 
to perhaps seek a little better medical care for the town that she lives in? You know, I don't really know why she's being kind of the way she is or she's making the choices that she's making. Um, I have a few guesses as to why she doesn't want to go to Pittsburgh, but I don't know for sure. So I don't really want to make any assumptions. Um, and you asked me if I felt that seniors are treated differently. Um, maybe, I, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Um, I'm, I've not been impressed with her search and he's an OBGYN so there's pictures of babies all over his office and lots of pregnant women or women with very small babies in his office and so do I think he prefers to deal with child women of childbearing age absolutely yes I do um, I was not happy at all with how he treated the two of us when we heard her um, her new diagnosis I thought he was very um, a little too detached and a little too quick to want us out of his office rather than staying and kind of providing a little bit of emotional support or you know offering something that sounded like he would be willing to work with her and, and support her in the way that he could as a professional um, he didn't offer that and so my take on him was he's not really in her corner whether that's because she's a senior or not you tell me um I think it's affected me more than I consciously know. Um, I just, uh, some days are fine and some days are not, you know, some days. Um, it's just a little overwhelming to think about everything and think about what might be on the road ahead. On the other hand, the best I can do for everybody is not make assumptions and um, not try to figure out what's going to happen and just take things one day at a time. Um, so I call my mom a little more often now than I would have before. Just check on her and see what kind of day she's having. And um, just kind of prepare myself that if I make that call I might get bad news and that might mean that I'm not fully present for my work or my family for that day. I think so. She's a um, very independent, strong-willed lady. She's mentally very sharp. Um, and she's been in that house for 41 years and she's already told me I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to Pittsburgh. Um, the options for some kind of assisted living in her town are not very many. And I don't really think she wants to go. She's made that very clear. Um, she's, as a matter of fact, she still works from home. Um, she has an office position and she's been working from home for the last, mm, I don't know, 12 to 15 years. And uh, I said, Mom, when are you going to retire? She says, I'll retire when I'm dead. And I think she kind of means it. She'll, or sometimes she says, when they kick me out, that's when I'll quit. And so she has that kind of attitude and I, um, really don't think she would choose assisted living at all, unfortunately, because um, she's very social, friendly, um, vibrant, extroverted person, and I think the network of people she could meet there would be wonderful for her. But she sees things differently, and like I said before, you know, it's her life, it's not mine. 
and I'm her daughter. I'm there to support her choices and offer her options when I know of them. So that's what I do. And um, sometimes you just have to take a step back and allow the person to deal with their illness and their needs and their life in the way that they want to. Oh yeah, she hates to ask for help. Um, yeah, <laughs> despite being very social and extroverted, she is very, very proud. And I know when she's trying to get her dignity back or some sense of self-control because she goes with her hair. And that tells me that she's kind of reaching for that, that I just need to kind of step back and, and uh, let her do that. I, I don't really have a good way to explain that one, but um, I think she's kind of, in a lot of ways, accepting that she's in the sunset chapter of her life. We don't know how long that will be. Um, and She's dealing with an illness that doesn't allow her a whole lot of options, at least none that we've found out about, to take action. So uh, mentally, yes, she hates this. She complains about it. She can't believe it. She's, she's very annoyed with this disease and what it's doing to her body. Um, so in that way, yes, she's, she's a fighter. But as far as um, taking the action with that to follow up with the attitude, she isn't. She's kind of just accepting whatever the doctors tell her. And if they say, we can't see you until October 29th, okay, well then I'll see you October 29th. Well, we wish the very best for your mom. Thank you. And we want to thank you for your time. And thank you for talking mm -hmm. with us. Thank you.